Good morning, Karen. How are you? I'm great, Trevor. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate taking the time. I know you are very busy these days, which is bittersweet. For, I don't think you maybe expected uh, your latest turn in the business to be as successful as it's been. So thanks for doing this. <laughs> I, it's my pleasure. I <laughs> take a few uh, minutes off from being a, an elf right now. <laughs> yeah. So for people listening, you are the CEO and founder of Alberta Food Tours. That's right. Yes. Started that in 2006. And uh, it, it's not that I came from a business background. I was a nurse and a nurse practitioner for 21 years. But uh, they say every business should know their why and why you exist. And, and so mine came from that background because I've always been very concerned about people being at their optimal health. And after 21 years as a nurse and uh, creating nurse practitioner programs, teaching nurse practitioners, uh, I became quite concerned that uh, instead of helping people live health more healthfully, mm -hmm. I was always just getting people um, after they'd lost their health. Mm. And so when you look at the diseases that I was seeing, obesity, high uh, blood pressure, heart disease, um, joint uh, conditions from carrying weed around, mm. uh, all of those things were caused by food. And uh, so I got thinking, how could I get out in front of this and change this story or help influence people's food choices and increase people's skills around food? And I started volunteering for a group called Slow Food International and Calgary's had a very vigorous uh, chapter of that since 2002. And I served on the board for six years um, and ran a lot of events that connected people with local farmers who grew food in a way that was good for soil, food and people. And so that became my why. I really thought that my life should be about improving the quality of soil, food and people, uh, the health of all of those things. And uh, I started writing about food and food issues and had columns in City Palette Magazine and uh, for CBC Radio, I've had three different columns over a decade. Mm -hmm. And I, I think by knowing a lot of farmers, a lot of chefs and um, reading and writing about food, I just saw lots of great stories. So that's where the uh, impetus for food tours came mm -hmm. because I thought if you can connect people um, through storytelling, uh, to great sources of food, then you're going to have an impact. You're going to be able to help them transform. And we used to see this all the time. I would do a, a tour called uh, Foodie Toodles, where we took 45 people to three farms in a day. And those were always transformative. There was always breakdowns and breakthroughs when people saw how hard farmers worked to produce food. Uh, they couldn't believe it. When farmers saw that there was people that actually cared, uh, <clears throat> they couldn't believe it. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the business evolved from me doing food tours. Maybe I did a dozen in 2006 to 2019, where we had um, 19 team members. Uh, we were in four cities. We had two Canadian signature experiences and uh, served cool. over 3,000 guests uh, last year. And then... COVID hit in March and we had to shut all that down. So from building something uh, uh, around a, a core idea um, to spreading it around the province to back down to mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. been quite a journey. Did you always consider yourself an entrepreneur kind of looking for a problem to solve or was it just a passion of yours or a bit of both? Uh, I think that, you know, one of the, uh, my great business strategies is that I didn't know what I didn't know. So it never stopped me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and if I haven't, my MBA would be on the streets because I've mm. learned everything um, uh, as I've gone along and uh, yeah, I've had some mentors, but um, I think that um, 
you know, one of my strategies was always working multiple jobs so that I could um, uh, raise cash flow for my business mm -hmm. when I needed it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, and I think that uh, I have a bit of that maverick personality. Um, I'm very patient, I'm very persistent. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those are good qualities. Uh, I'm also, I love people and uh, I'm very community oriented. I think the purpose of commerce is to serve your com community. Yeah, for sure. If I get along with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you gotta, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think that, um, you know, keeping uh, your customer, your guest um, in the center and your why at the center of business um, takes you a long way. Uh, it'd be easy to give up when COVID says, mm -hmm. oh, you can't actually operate. But uh, for us, that was a reason to go back and ask, what is it that our community needs right now? They still need activity. They still need to know about great food, but they need something that's safe. So that really um, inspired me to create um, uh, something called the Alberta Food Finder, which is uh, a mobile um, device-based game uh, that's a self-guided food tour. Uh, so we started it here in the Kensington neighborhood. We launched it in October. Uh, but, you know, I applied for some grant funding uh, for innovation and was successful in getting that. So we were able to put that together. And so now people can um, do a guided, a self-guided tour through a game that gives them 29 clues to solve and challenges and activities. And they get four free tastings and they get discounts and, and uh, offers and promos at, at uh, oh, you know, a few dozen businesses. And it's something fun they can do on their own, uh, but keep safe and it's family friendly. So, and that, I love that we came up with that business um, during this time because uh, it's something that won't go away after uh, we learn to live with COVID. It's something that we can scale up and will become uh, a pillar of our business. And then recently, you know, how you and I got to know each other better was mm -hmm. that um, another thing I went back to asking, what does the community need right now? Mm -hmm. And we need ways to show each other that we care mm -hmm. uh, because we're isolated and we can't get together like we usually do. Um, and so the idea occurred to me uh, of a good old fashioned care package. Yep. I send one to my son regularly in Ottawa. When I was young, when I was in college, my grandmother, the Nova Scotia Mental Health Society had this thing where uh, parents or grandparents could send fruit baskets to kids during exams. And I remember getting one of those and it was always a great little lift. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that kind of thing for my son. And I thought maybe we could, as Alberta Food Tours, um, use all the knowledge we have of uh, what local businesses have great practices that impact our community. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could feature those businesses, but also help some uh, mental health organizations. So uh, we put together a box with six great products in it. And uh, I, I liked Rose Brothers because you plant trees every time we yeah, buy thanks. one of your... <laughs> That's the so, idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we chose uh, Highwood Crossing because they're organic. And uh, so they, the more successful they are, the more uh, farmland in Alberta that will become organic. Mm -hmm. uh, Olia uh, makes a caramel sauce. So we chose them because they do a lot um, of work with uh, decreasing food waste. Um, uh, Souptacular is a great company out of St. Albert. We chose them to be in our care package because uh, they actually put Alberta beans in the soup mix. Mm -hmm. And I know that might sound simple, but most of our uh, lentils, peas, chickpeas, uh, beans, beans and lentils get shipped uh, to foreign countries, especially mm -hmm. India, and then shipped back to us in a package. So it was nice to find an Alberta company using Alberta product, and I wanted to support that. And uh, uh, 
Silk Road Spice Merchants. We have their mulling spice in there. And they're another company that just very quietly is always giving back to the community. So through that, uh, we're able to support Impact Society, um, which teaches youth uh, their own signature strengths and how to um, use those uh, to make great decisions in life. And then Tip Top Bakery in Edmonton, which mm -hmm. takes youth uh, age 15 to 24 off the street uh, in Edmonton and gives them um, a real purpose and, and teaches them skills. Mm -hmm. So through that, you know, we launched that November 8th, it's December 2nd today. And uh, we're, I thought we'd maybe sell 50 boxes, but we're going to sell 250. We're almost sold out. So we'll raise $1,500 for charity. We'll support these six great local businesses and we'll keep Alberta food tours, uh, give Alberta food tours a third point in a, a triangle of product lines mm -hmm. to sell. Because mm -hmm. now we're going to go right on and uh, develop a, an amazing uh, chocolate box for heart month and support some heart, heart charities because uh, heart disease is still the number one thing that kills uh, Canadians, especially women. Right. I, uh, as an aside, had uh, a brief conversation about that with Dr. Anderson. So, I, <laughs> Dr. Anderson is listening. Appreciate your time on that subject. <laughs> but my, you, my dear husband, your husband, uh, yes, the heart disease, and so, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it'd be great to. They started a women's heart health initiative at the Libin Center in Calgary, and yes. very few people know about it. There's very little research on women, and and yeah. yet it is the number one thing that kills women. So it's nine times you're nine times more likely to die of heart disease than breast cancer. Yeah. Uh, just to put that in perspective, as a woman. Right. So when COVID hit, things were looking good for Alberta food tours originally. Did you ever think about shutting down the business? You know, uh, we shut, I had been in India. <clears throat> I came back March 10th. I think the word to shut down came out March 12th. Yeah. So, you know, I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to bake for a few months. And because uh, <laughs> you're at a stage where you maybe don't need to keep Alberta food tours going. I don't, it's kind of Oh, no, I had nine, you know, I have a full-time operations manager to support right. and, and 18 guides. So I have a strong desire. These are really fun jobs for people. Right. And uh, I had many contracts to fulfill and, uh, and I don't believe in retirement. So I think that we're here to contribute all the days of our life that mm -hmm. we're lucky enough to live. Yeah. So I'll never retire. Um, so no, I, I, I really thought that, things would uh, come back much quicker. We, but then it became obvious that group tours would not be happening. <laughs> so that's when I thought, okay, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time, uh, develop something that's more user centric and people can do on their own and not, you know, they become the center of the experience and not uh, just on the side watching a guide deliver everything. So um, this was a real opportunity. And, uh, and then grant funding became a, uh, opened up and we were successful in applying for that so we really hustled and and uh, developed something really fun and uh, mm -hmm. so it's been really rewarding and i really look forward to scaling that up and um, bringing it to more places in the province so you uh in the spring when covid started to hit i'm sure there was a bit of stress what did you have to do is in terms of staff for alberta food tours did everyone get laid off or how did that well come? i think what what's you know, most of our team are um, contract hires. So in, in March 10th, we really hadn't started an active season yet. Mm. So, uh, you know, I've been able to keep um, operations manager on at the layoff. Uh, we have some, um, a consult for digital marketing. And mm. uh, so that contract we had to um, uh, end. But again, through the grant, we were able to bring that person back yeah. um, five hours a week. So, um, uh, yeah, so it'd be great if we are able to, um, you know, come back to touring and bring more of those very talented people back. Yeah. Uh, that's the dream. Uh, we, you know, we had some great contracts with some um, big tour companies that visit Alberta and uh, they're not able to, uh, they're pretty devastated. So, mm -hmm. you know, we really hope that um, uh, 
travel will come back. Yeah. We don't know what that's going to look like, but we'll be ready. Just want to be ready. Yeah, well, in a sense, it's been an opportunity for the company. You guys have developed new products and <laughs> new parts of the business in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's the thing is that if you always go back to your why, mm -hmm. why do you do what you do and who do you do it for and think about it, your business from that point of view, then that's really what gave us direction to keep going. Mm -hmm. and to innovate these new products for people mm -hmm. um, because it's always about what do people need right mm -hmm. and um uh so yeah i think that the success is based on those relationships and always looking uh to serve when you were younger um as when you were a nurse did you want to have a business in those days is it something you've always had your eye on or was it just kind of evolved no you know uh I started working in a nursing home when I was 16 Okay. and uh, I loved nursing. I was passionate about it. I did my degree in Halifax. I came out to Calgary in 1984. I worked with uh, cancer patients and uh, AIDS patients and I loved it. And that's why I did my master's degree and uh, pushed my limits. And, and uh, I think that, um, nursing is something that you have to be completely passionate about mm -hmm. and uh, devote yourself to. And, and then when we had our first child, um, he, he died uh, within two days. Um, he didn't mm -hmm. make it. And uh, so it gave me, again, you know, I was developing nurse practitioner programs at that time and went on to do that. But when I did then a few years later, have a healthy child born, mm -hmm. I thought, um, the, that great loss that I'd suffered mm -hmm. had uh, changed me. And uh, I wanted to just take some time off to, to, to devote to uh, mm -hmm. uh, raising my child. So I did that for a couple of years. Um, but again, um, I think that uh, that insight that I had that I really wasn't having an impact on people's health after 21 mm. years. That's really what changed nursing for me. Mm. Um, and I realized my why was about getting out of the system at that point, but still mm. always devoting myself to um, how healthy uh, I could help make people mm -hmm. or help them make themselves healthy. And I grew up in a small town in New Brunswick. Um, one grandfather had a fish market. The other grandfather was a market gardener. And I had three generations of great cooks. Mm. So for me, my background did influence my choice of how to approach health because uh, I realized that not very many people were as connected to food as I mm. was. And uh, so I just really wanted uh, other people to... Um, have the ability, the chance to form those strong connections like I had grown up with, because I think that the more connected you are with food and the source of food, the healthier you're going to be. It's that simple. Yeah, absolutely. You so I imagine. <laughs> yeah. You're so, probably a pretty good cook. <laughs> well, I work at it, right? It's like uh, I started when I was 10 cooking for a family of six uh, because my mom worked part time. So, you know, if you practice anything what is it the Malcolm Gladwell you need 10,000 hours yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so but you know I think that one of the things if people are thinking about switching careers you know you have to just take the plunge and the bigger the risk the bigger rewards mm -hmm. but you try to buffer that like I always work part-time at other things so that my company had another you know, I had money uh, to put into my company when mm -hmm. I needed it so that I didn't have to bring in outside partners. Um, and I think that, you know, it's taken me on a journey that I would never have predicted. Um, I did, I, when I had a column for the CBC, I, I, I did a 10, can you imagine people had 10 minute, I love podcasts because you didn't, have a little more time to talk but yeah um you know we had 10 i had a 10 minute column and i did a thing about when britain declared curry as their national dish i thought what does that look like in alberta so i interviewed a woman that had very successful cookbooks called the spicy touch 
And she and I became very good friends. I'd taken cooking lessons, Indian cooking lessons from her. And she asked me uh, to be her recipe tester and writer. So we worked on a cookbook for nine years. It came out and won uh, some lovely awards. I think my mom but, is that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but through that process, um, I was invited to take people to India. So I've now taken seven groups of people right. to India on culinary trips. I've taken people to Thailand. So those are huge rewards for taking risks, right? And I think that there's just been so many unexplained uh, or un unanticipated yeah. benefits of being an entrepreneur, uh, having flexibility. I, wouldn't call, I would call myself a mom entrepreneur because my, the growth of my company, people might think I'm really slow, but it was really centered around being a mom first and mm -hmm. getting in business goals um, mm -hmm. uh, around that. And now my son's off at college and he's 21 and six foot four. So it's okay that my company got big and I work a lot of long hours at it. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like it was a more sustainable business model, whether you knew it or not. Yeah, well, I think that- um, Like no debt, no major debts. and. No, 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 just, you know, a bit now because COVID, but that's okay. We'll get mm -hmm. past it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so I think it, it's been a big reward for sure. And uh, uh, I've learned a lot about um, strategy and marketing and sales. Sales was an epiphany for me for many years. We were focused on development, 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 mm -hmm. and then marketing, marketing, marketing. And then it's like, oh, Oh well, yeah, we really should spend some time on sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, things that are obvious to people that went through business school, um, uh, you know, I've just learned uh, uh, as we went along. Mm -hmm. But I think that at the core, being a good communicator and loving people and uh, and keeping relationships going has really served us well. When you're starting a business, do you think it's more important to solve a problem or follow your passion? For instance, I was reading a book, I just finished one on Peter Thiel, Zero to One, and his argument is that you need proprietary technology or a 10x improvement before you have a viable business. Whereas if you listen to someone like Warren Buffett, he'll say, build a brand and delight the customer. What's your take on that? Hmm. I think that um, <clears throat> you do need to have um, something that serves people um, and maybe they don't even know it but <laughs> mm -hmm. they need yeah but they don't know it yet right you need um but it has to be honest like it has to you have to be passionate about it or you wouldn't keep going yeah exactly tough, yeah right so it has to gel um all of those things have to come together mm -hmm. and i think that by keeping an awareness of what's going on in the world, trends in your business, um, you know, being able to step back and have a, an insight and a vision, uh, those are the qualities of leadership that will set you apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just daunting when you read zero to one, for instance, in, in this, you know, Peter Thiel would say, unless you have proprietary tech, proprietary technology that there's no point. <laughs> well, that's a very tech based um, yeah. uh, outlook, right? Exactly. You know, I, I live in a world of food and people. So, mm -hmm. you know, and yet, um, yeah. And I think that one of my mentors, uh, I, after a few years in the business, I, I found a mentor uh, that had a, a food tour professionals certification program for best practices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had figured that out on his own. He had a, a good business background where he built and sold a few businesses. Hmm. So, you know, he has built a great uh, consultation business by sharing everything he knew and not hmm. keeping it proprietary or, or maybe it is proprietary because he's able to uh, sell it as a consulting service, but hmm. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, food care packages, uh, some colleagues from Alaska and California, 
you know, I paid eight dollars to attend a webinar where they gave best practices. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's like sharing. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I think I would set up something with them and other food tour operators to share what we've learned by developing a, a self-guided food tour on an app, best mm -hmm. practices. So mm -hmm. mm, I think, you know, yeah, with technology, with uh, some, if you were inventing a COVID vaccine, yeah. you need to be very proprietary. Um, but a lot of uh, great business can come about by sharing, mm -hmm. you know, as well. So. Um, but I think that for me, um, yeah, I think it is about relationships and about thinking about big picture, what people in the world need right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just interesting. You hear opinions from all over the map. Like I was saying, if you look at Warren Buffett or someone like that, his, his he buys brands and his, mm -hmm. his advice is to delight your customer. He, yeah. he's never really been in attack and whatnot and so it seems like everyone has their opinion on that <laughs> well certainly a lot of our growth has come from the fact that we were able to delight our customers exactly and so our you know reviews any yeah. business now uh people are looking for peer review and so whatever modality um that comes through you know uh we used to get a lot through TripAdvisor mm -hmm. for travelers, but now um, Google is serving us really well in the local market. And yeah. um, uh, so I think that um, seeking that out as a business owner, asking for that. I, I have a friend that owns a, a car. Um, oh, what do you call it when your car's smashed up and you have to take uh, <laughs> detail? Power? Not detailing, but, um, you know, body work. Okay, auto body yeah. maybe? Yeah. He has a body shop. Okay. And, uh, you know, he has this thing where he they ask for a Google review and then they give away a TV every yeah. month. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you give a Google review, your name goes in a hat. So they're actively seeking it, but then they come up number one on Google because there's right. a lot of auto body shops out there and they're number one, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, we don't reward people that way. We just yeah. uh, very politely uh, share with people that it's the number one way they can help us. And so they um, are been happy to take the time to do that. Did you think Alberta Food Tours would grow as large as it did? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> I'm happy that it did and uh, it's a good problem to have yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really fun to know a, uh, a lot of people in the food community in the province and mm -hmm. uh, in 2017 another you know serendipitous thing that came out of uh being the founder and operator of alberta food tours is that i got asked to write a book called food artisans of alberta so uh, because I have a great operations manager, I was able to take a lot of time off that year. And um, I traveled, I drove like 10,000 kilometers around Alberta. Mm -hmm. And in, in between uh, my co-author Tilly Sanchez and I interviewed uh, 200 people. And we, you know, so it, it's a very joyous thing for me to know uh, many, many uh, people across the province that uh, are dedicated to uh, growing great helpful uh, food for people mm -hmm. and um, or cooking it or preserving it or, or whatever aspect they're in. Um, so for me, um, it makes me love Alberta uh, even more than I already did uh, to have that huge web of connectivity. When the, when the company started to grow and you started to make some money, was your goal to kind of just break even or was it to pay yourself a nice salary? A bit of both? <laughs> um, well, my goal has always been to pay my team very well, mm -hmm. to pay all of our vendors and uh, to take what's left over. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. And uh, this, sometimes there's not very much. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that's because I had... Uh, only one income stream mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So now that we'll have a few income streams, uh, this should be much more lucrative for me, mm -hmm. which, you know, ultimately, um, I may never retire, but if I ever did want to sell this business, uh, it really, there really has to be a healthy profitability for someone else to do what I do. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a good way to look at starting a business is the thought that maybe you never will retire from it? I mean, it seems like that's kind of why it's been successful is because you never really had a thought of selling it. Mm. You know I mean? Yeah, I, I know, you know, when I travel, I pick up magazines. I think there's one called Founder. And I'm reading about all these founders. And the thing that impressed me about that magazine is they all went in <clears throat> with an exit strategy. And so exactly. um, they would probably just shake their head at me. But um, mm, I... I think that I didn't get into business to get out of it. I got exactly. to um, contribute to my community for as long as I, possible and uh, to engage it. Now, uh, as you mature as a business person, you also have to think about succession. And, and if something would happen to you, you have to be able to leave it so that somebody else could run it. Um, you don't want to leave your family um, in a bad place financially. So you have to clean up, mm -hmm. uh, make sure your books are really in good order. And, um, you know, I'm still working on um, making sure that I leave it in a solid financial place, but I'll get there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, I, uh, as long as I have my health, um, you know, I'm 59 years old. Um, I, really uh, take care of myself so I can see myself being around a long time. Do you think but that may be one of the reasons why Alberta Food Tours has done so well is you didn't really start with the intention of selling it, you know, in two or three years, you kind of built it sustainably? Absolutely. It's, um, it, it, I think that um, every once in a while, uh, a new business, food tour business will pop up and my team will say, oh my gosh, we've got competition here. We've got competition there. And, and I said, oh yeah, it's okay. Just yeah. see if they last. Really? <laughs> <laughs> or people will call me in with help with business planning. And, <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, it's very hard to pay vendors, pay a team and, and, um, and charge an amount that people will pay and still have money left over for yourself. So yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense. So you have to get bigger, which I did. And, uh, um, and then I think it's really key to have these other uh, lines of business so that um, it'll all um, be, oh, I love that word synergy. It'll, there'll be yeah. synergy. And, That's and, a MBA speak, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo Slip that in there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway yeah i think um yeah i think a lot of people would think i was crazy huh. but you know i um and the other thing is uh you know i'm passionate about writing so uh you know i'm not working in the food tour business every day because i have a team set up mm -hmm. so i can take time out to, uh, to write books and to travel and to write. So I think that's the other thing is I haven't mm, compromised those other passions as well. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would, you gotta take time for yourself, obviously. Burnout happens pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. um, when you look at other companies that have tried to copy you guys, what are the common mistakes you see? Um, they maybe uh their why isn't as clear okay they just think it'll be fun right nothing wrong with fun but yeah. uh you know eventually uh that can wear out when some challenges pop up mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and then maybe they don't believe in the worth of what they're doing hmm. so they don't charge enough and uh and they and then also if they don't believe in the worth, they're not paying their partners well. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't scale up so that they have a team doing it. They're trying to do everything themselves. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, that would be pretty exhausting. So I think they get exhausted. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, financially, you kept the company yourself, obviously. You didn't raise any debt or equity and anything like that. Would you recommend that strategy to people? Yeah, I think that um, uh, every time, I'm always on the lookout for small business grants mm -hmm. and um, uh, in my industry, in the travel industry, there's been some opportunities. Um, I also did a crowdfunder with ATB one year to raise capital. And uh, that was really a very interesting exercise, um, a lot of work. But as we raised $22,000, which might not sound like a lot, but it was the most that ATB had ever raised at that point, which they neglected to tell me when I told them my goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but uh, as we raised that capital, we raised a lot of community as well. Mm. Uh, and we got uh, our brand name out there more. I think the other thing that uh, we've done a really good job with um, is creating a very beautiful brand. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, I spent money on that early, invested mm. in that with a, a branding company, created yeah. something really special. I don't know if your listeners uh, have ever seen our branding, but it's hmm. um, uh, an artist uh, um, did watercolor paintings of the seven signature foods and other foods from Alberta, and then slipped it all into like a wallpaper. And uh, so it's very, very striking. And um, even my car, I have a wrap, my car is now has all these fun bison, elk, beef, hmm. uh, um, Saskatoon berries and wheat and canola all hmm. over my car. So we have a lot of fun with that. And, um, and it's not that we're a household name, but um, it does <clears throat> make us stand out mm -hmm. on Instagram and, and just keeping everything very consistent with our colors and and that evolved over time but since um 2016 it's been rock solid for us since we did scale up we made sure that it was all very tight and and mm. when you're trying to uh, expand to multiple locations you really have to have a unified look and so i'm really pleased with how that came uh, about yeah, yeah for sure it's uh branding yeah it's huge <laughs> and it's the promise you know <clears throat> getting your um, being able to make a promise. So, you know, we say um, eat Alberta first is our mm -hmm. mantra. Mm -hmm. And that really um, resonates with people. They see our purpose that we're encouraging that uh, we say eat, engage, explore. That's what you're going to do with us. You're going to eat the best food. You're going to engage with locals and you're going to explore Alberta in a different way. So, over time, we've been able to get those messages really clean and clear. And uh, uh, again, so that a brand promise is delivered and it's deliverable. Um, so we structure all our activities to just do those simple promises, deliver those simple promises. Did you ever think about having your own food product for shelves or to sell online? Well, we have a food product. Okay. <laughs> it's very exclusive. We have two beehives that I tend. Oh, right. I forgot our, about that. <laughs> our bees uh, produced 81 pounds of honey this year. Right. Yes. And this is the first year that we actually sold any because typically um, that gets jarred in the only people that get it are our partners across the province. Hmm. That's our thank you every holiday season that they get uh, jars of our honey and they're the only ones that get it. But this year we've not been able to um, uh, visit our partners. So I actually sold uh, hmm, probably 75 jars and uh, my husband helped me a lot with the extraction and, and uh, filtering and bottling this year. And he said that, we sold it for seven fifty per jar. Hmm. He said it should be a thousand dollars per jar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with the work involved of, of beekeeping. But no, um, no, I don't want to get into food production. I'm. I think that I'm really good at promoting uh, hmm. other people's products that I really care about. Hmm. So I think that the Alberta Care packages um, will continue, 
and uh, we're just brainstorming uh, other people we can involve and uh, how we can carry that through the year. And uh, whether it's COVID or not, uh, make the packages things that people will want to gift to others to show that they care. Because mm -hmm. whether there's COVID or not, you still need the opportunity and ways to show you care. And uh, food has always been a way of uh, showing love and affection and care. So we mm -hmm. want to make that local and helpful and fun. Eventually, hopefully the food tours come back too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that will be good. And, you know, I'm still a very small player. You know, we work with some very large um, international companies that bring thousands of people to Alberta each mm. year. So the fact that they're not able to operate um, and yeah. they're not able to bring that income to Alberta is devastating. Hmm. You, uh, you obviously don't know when COVID's going to end and all that, but do you think COVID's kind of changed the food tour landscape and the, and the uh, food yeah, industry? Yeah, I think that, I do. I think that um, I heard something that really struck me. Um, and it was, uh, there is no such thing as a post-COVID world. Hmm. Um, so I think that everything's going to be changed. Uh, um, everything will be smaller. Um, more intimate we're going to be um, in everything we do we're going to be uh, paying a lot more attention to hygiene mm. and um, I think masks are going to become de rigueur like de, you know mm -hmm. uh, and you know I don't know when I'll be able to take people traveling internationally again mm -hmm. uh, I think the insurance companies um, are already uh, jumping on board and um, uh, getting their act together. So Manulife, I think, was the first one to respond. They, so any Air Canada flight booked internationally comes with Manulife insurance that covers COVID. Hmm. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. It's going to cost more to travel. Yeah. And uh, those are the big things that I see. Hmm. Small group. Um, better ventilation, more hygiene. Maybe these are not bad things, you know. Uh, maybe the overall rate of deaths from flu and pneumonia will go down in the world as well. I think we've, we're already seeing that. So, you know, there's always good things that come out of crises. And maybe these were things that needed to be dealt with anyway. Mm -hmm. But I'd hate to see a world where we didn't travel because that's what breaks yeah. down barriers and makes us realize we're all one uh, large organism. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with COVID, you probably thought about, well, you did pivot the business a little bit. Were there other times throughout the history of the business where you thought about changing your business services or the product well, you sold? Absolutely. I think that there's a great um, book. Uh, you've probably read it. It's called The Experience Economy. I never have. Who's that by? Um, it's two people, Riley and something, sorry. Okay. I'll have to read it. <laughs> it's been yeah. a while since I read it, but it's, um, it talks about macroeconomics and mm. how we have gone from agrarian, uh, economics to industrial, to information, to services. And now, yeah. you know, as each of those economies has been devalued, the next one becomes valuable. So what comes after the service uh, economy is the experience economy. And according to these authors of this book, the ultimate economy is uh, transformation. Mm. So I saw that services were being devalued. So that's why I took a, a course with Travel Alberta called Shift, where you, uh, you take um, the service you're providing and learn to um, transform it into more of an experience and make it more user focused. So that's really from that work that I did in those, in that course, uh, and came back and applied that to, um, products we were, you know, developing so that, uh, I went back and rewrote our Inglewood, uh, tour so that it was, much more of an experience for our guests 
than them just following a guide around. So um, uh, there's a number of examples, but you know, instead of the chef presenting a salad, uh, people take honey from our beehives in that garden at Rouge and Alberta organic canola, and they make a salad dressing. So dressing. what are you gonna remember about your salad if the chef gave it to you or if you made it? It's like teach a person to fish, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you send them home with that recipe card, they'll never forget that experience. So trying to put more things like that into everything we do, mm -hmm. where uh, you are part of the experience, you're creating your own experience. So, um, and that's why our, our Banff Springs Eat the Castle, you know, really working with the team there to say, this is great, this is, we have this access, but how can we give people an experience? So, you know, working with the chef to find a way where we can get them in a kitchen where they decorate their own profiteroles with the chef, chef at the Banff Springs Hotel. Yeah. Right? It's unforgettable. Yeah. So, yeah. so then I would say, you know, also the international travel, you know, taking people to India for two or three weeks that's transformative that changes people's lives mm -hmm. taking people to farms that's transformative um, mm -hmm. economy uh, people will pay more for that mm -hmm. and uh, so mm -hmm. i think that that was one of the key um, other times where i've changed my business model um, and uh, so rather it's hard than just to, it's hard you know people will look at our tours and think they're more expensive mm -hmm. but the quality of the food you're getting and the quality of the experience we've created for you um, are very different. So we, it's hard to communicate that differentiation um, so that people get it. But again, if you look at our branding, the amount of money we spend on photography, uh, everything is mm, aimed at differentiating that we're, we've gone above and beyond to delight you. Warren Buffett would like us. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it, right? Maybe. It's, it's not just a, a, a service, uh, a one-off service. The idea is to kind of meant to leave a memory with your customers and transform there. Sure. And, you know, since I started in 2006, we have some guests that have done everything we've ever created because they, and they're sad. They're like, well, what are you going to do next? Interesting. Right? So, you know, if I've, uh, I'm very fortunate that, you know, uh, say I've done eight international trips. There's some people that have been on, you know, repeat four or five times, right? So. That's yeah. good for Alberta food tours. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll probably, you know, at some point um, do a lot more international travel as well, mm. because just as we've created this, uh, these connections in this web in Alberta, you know, now after so many trips to India, we, you know, we have, mm. it feels like family there, right? And um, so I think that you'll, you know, you'll see us do a lot more, offer a lot more international travel when we can. Hmm. Um, speaking of books, do you have any favorite business books? Oh, I, I think, um, well, you know, that experience economy was really uh, transformational for me. I mean, going right back to uh, the beginning, reading the E-Myth. I've uh, read that, Michael Gerber. Yeah, you know, that was really important early on to realize that uh, if I was going to just do the food tours all the time, I was never really going to be able to grow it, that I yep. had to bring in people. And um, uh, so that lesson of working on your business not just in your business mm -hmm. i still you know um need to make a point of stepping back right mm. right now uh you know because we pivoted again i'm packing boxes and yeah <laughs> yeah but i also have to take time out to plan the next one envision mm -hmm. a series of them and mm -hmm. create new partnerships and right mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, that's a famous book. I got that from Tim Ferriss. I don't know if you ever, but he's a totally random. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a lot of people have read that one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we do some work with Disney. And uh, so there's one called Disney University, which talks about their four pillars. 
Hmm. Lots to do with customer service um, and safety. And so I, I uh, admire a lot of, especially when you are in tourism, um, you can learn a lot from Disney. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how important do you think the concept of working on your business versus in, versus in your business really is? Say that again, sorry. With the concept of uh, working on your business for, versus working in it, how important do you think that is to growing and being successful? Oh, I think it's huge um, because otherwise you're just in a tunnel. Yeah. And you'll just tunnel along. Yes. You'll never, uh, um, you'll have tunnel vision. You'll never have uh, a grasp of. Right. Uh, Bigger uh, picture. Bigger picture. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, you have to come up and look around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Huh. And it's uh, not like if you quiz me on current affairs that I'm uh, some kind of guru at it, but it's just uh, looking at what's going on in the world and then applying that to how does that fit with my purpose, my reason for being for my business, mm -hmm. right? And how, so that, um, yeah, that's important. Any other important books, maybe not even business books that have helped you? Hmm. I think um, there's a great one. If people are stumped by creativity, uh, there's one called The Artist's Way. I've heard of that Julia one. Cameron. Okay. And uh, I think it's like a 10 or 12 weeks of exercises to increase your creativity. Hmm. And uh, um, I think that's a profound book for people to read. Okay. It, um, it, it's really freeing because it teaches you to stop censoring your ideas. Hmm. And um, it also um just loosens up part of your brain that's been underused i think for a lot of people hmm. so it's not necessarily a business book but i think that it really uh delivers uh people tell me that i'm very creative um but i think it's because um i uh, i'm not afraid of putting something out there you know in writing it's called the shitty first draft yep for sure and uh so one of the things that i learned from julia cameron is that you're not allowed to edit when you're writing the shitty first draft yeah you know i love it when one of my team members sends me a shitty first draft and then i just take off with it mm. because they've done all that hard part <laughs> It's way yeah. easier to edit than it in a, a, once something's down on paper, right? Yes. So it's just like whatever your ideas, just go in free flow and do not stop and edit anything until you have expressed an idea completely. Hmm. Then you go back and, and you go and uh, it'll just get better and better and better and better. So never be tied to your words. Just all words can be improved and the less words, you know, write long and then shorten mm -hmm. and so and i think too like bill gates uh and steve jobs would say just put it out there and refine it mm -hmm. because you don't know what glitches there are mm -hmm. so some of our tours you know even our app uh our mobile uh game our self-guided food tour game uh we put it out we tested it we tested it we tested it then we got real people playing it and paying for it. It was like, okay, now there's this. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's awesome. that, you know, you don't, there is no such thing as perfection. Mm. So people get paralyzed by that. And I've never fallen into that trap. Just put it out there and, uh, and be constantly bettering it. Yeah. And, um, you know, 2.0, 3.0, whatever, just yeah. get on with it. I think that uh, I hate, I, it's a crime, all the creativity that's lost because people um, wanted perfection. There just mm -hmm. is no such thing. There's only improvement always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
Rose Bros Coffee, for instance, has kind of been a creative outlet for um, me in a way. And uh, I think that's important for business to kind of, like we were saying, differentiate yourself. Is to allow your creativity to come through in the business. I'm sure you've seen that with Alberta Food Tours. Oh, absolutely. And uh, uh, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, yeah, so... I think that, um, uh, yeah, people just need to, um, you know, it is good to have a good business plan. Um, and I think that if I wrote uh, a business book, it would be called um, Baby Steps. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Baby Steps Business Model, because um, I think that, too, I went to a, I don't go to these things very often, but when my son was young, I took a day and I went to uh, a conference that was a lot of big idea people. Mm. And I forget who it was, but they said, just work on your business an hour a day mm. uh, as you're developing it. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so when I was starting out, I just took that advice and I just, an hour a day, I would do mm. something to move it forward. Hmm. And, uh, and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I think like my cookbook, a spicy touch, mm -hmm. uh, it took nine years. Yeah. And it'd be really easy to give up on that. I'm writing another uh, Indian cookbook right now. Uh, and we're doing that on a blog called faces places and plates.com mm. and it's painfully slow because i have a, a company to run and my uh, photographer collaborator uh is an artist and um an entrepreneur so you know we just uh uh yeah it's it's like a five-year project but it will be beautiful when it's done so you have that vision that end goal and you just don't give up mm -hmm. um yeah, I, I don't know what other projects. Yeah, I, I'm pushing myself. Uh, another thing that we found that people needed during COVID was recipes and ideas of what to cook. Mm -hmm. So in our Alberta Food Tours newsletter, um, each month I'm uh, posting a chapter of a, a new book, a new cookbook that we'll call Eat Alberta First. Mm. And cool. so you know, I'm pushing myself and my creativity um, to do that very quickly mm -hmm. uh, because people need it right now. So I think that um, that's another reason why you need to take time for yourself um, to look at your overall life goals mm -hmm. and where business fits. And, you know, like I'm a very... Um, Mm, pen to paper person so it's not very I mean we have Trello boards slack boards whatever mm -hmm. but at the end of the day at the end you know I have like a day likes to see it and I physically like to write and check things off lists and and at the back of that I sort of have my big projects yeah for sure Oops, I don't know if you're can, Anyway, and so just always keeping multiple goals in mind, it's really helpful. So, yeah. yeah. I anyway, you... I have talked Is there, you know, uh, it's a, been a delight to find out about your company and to work with Rose Chocolate Bars for me so far for our box. I'm, uh, we're losing the internet connection here. Oh, can you hear me? I can. Are you okay now? I can hear you now. Um, no, I was just saying I appreciate your time. Uh, that's been a great conversation. And uh, if you, uh, being a food expert in Alberta and whatnot, is there a, is there a particular place you would uh, recommend to go eat tomorrow if I had to choose? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, you should set up a schedule okay. where you plan to order uh, 
uh, maybe as much as you can afford once or twice a week, you should set up a schedule and share the love around because everybody uh, needs you right now. Okay. And uh, I, uh, you'd have to give me a category of what you're looking for. Um, and the okay. next thing on my list is uh, I've been craving tacos. So um, I'm going to order from Native Tongues or there's a new taco place, uh, Kami, Kami Tacos. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, pizza's easy, Thai food's easy. There's just so much good food in this city. And there's so many restaurants that are going to go under if we don't mm. get ordering. <laughs> so I don't know what your budget is, but, uh, you know, I think that, um, yeah. Is there anything you're craving? Well, I, I tend to default to Domino's pizza, so uh, I'm sure most things are uh, <laughs> better than that. You, you know, right here in Kensington, there's Pulcinella. There's yes, Freeho, another good for sure. There's yeah. uh, 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 Una pizza. Yeah. There's uh, without papers pizza you cannot order from a big chain right now I know. I know, I know. must support these beautiful so please will you promise me you'll do that i will for sure uh before we wrap up any advice to someone starting out in a business especially nowadays with covid <laughs> thank you I'm uh, losing the I'm losing the internet. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you now. I yeah. um, advice for anyone just to wrap up uh, starting a business during COVID these days. Well, um, make sure that you are uh, really aimed at um, serving people. They need um, businesses to care about them, and uh, that would be my advice. Make sure that you are helping people through this tough time and you will be rewarded. That's awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much for taking the time today. My pleasure. And I know that you're just going to um, succeed in everything you do. Well, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. And uh, I promise not to get dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it <laughs> thanks trevor take care one sec here